I'm camping in Utah in late winter, and the last couple of days have been quite cold. So I decided to take this opportunity to show how I brew coffee. In years past, we tried a couple of different methods. We had an old percolator. We've tried, you know, French press thermoses and so on and so forth. We bought this camper in 2015. I decided to resurrect the old family coffee pot. So this is actually a Nicro Model 500 that was likely manufactured in the 50s at some point. This coffee pot was actually my, my family's. So I grew up with this coffee pot and I acquired it from my parents shortly after we were married. And I used it for a number of years until the gasket uh, got dried out and cracked. The coffee, this, this coffee pot consists of four four pieces. The pot itself, which, you know, other than being stainless steel, it just looks like a, a normal coffee pot or carafe. The upper chamber is this funnel, which has a tube that goes down almost to the very bottom of the lower chamber. This gasket, which I was able to acquire a replacement for online back in 2015, I lost track of, of who I actually got this from. But the manufacturer actually recommended gluing it on using silicone, which I elected not to do. What I do instead is sometimes I just get it a little bit wet, and then I, I hold the whole thing together, which I'll show in here in a bit, to create a decent seal. Now the most important piece of the whole setup might be the filter. So the, fist, the filter can consist of these two discs. The upper disc in this case has some triangular holes, and then the lower disc consists of these, uh, has these round holes, and they actually don't line up with each other. So as the vacuum pulls the coffee from the upper chamber down, it keeps the big chunks of the grounds from getting at least down into the, into the lower chamber. There's a spring to keep tension on one of two hooks. Now there used to be a there used to be a little extra tab that you could grab a hold of, but at some point in the last few years, I, I lost that little extra bit piece. So the the hooks just drop down inside the tube, like so, and then you just kind of reach in there and grab a hold of it. And I always, I always use the, the, the tighter hook. So the next step is just to put some water in the pot. So I got it filled to approximately where the curve starts. I'll set it on my, the stove. And we'll get that, we'll get that boiling. While we're waiting for the water to boil, I can add coffee to the upper chamber. I often use peats. I like the Brazil flavor. The medium roast is, is kind of nice. But uh, recently my son got me some Happy Camper s'mores. So I'm going so to give that a go. So I just, I don't do anything special here. I just, I just, I just add some coffee to the pot. What I do is I shake it around and I get, I get the level till it's almost, but not quite, covering that little tab. Now that our, our water is boiling, first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll turn the burner down. In my case, on, on my camper stove, I'll turn it down to, to two, about two and a half. And now I'll, I'll add the, uh, I'll just go ahead and add the upper chamber. So what I do is, you know, sometimes all I do is I just kind of get it I get it seated in there pretty good. And then you'll see the, the boiling water in the lower chamber will push, will push the liquid in the coffee up. And once it starts to boil, I set a three minute timer on my watch. 
And then we just, when we come back and at the end of three minutes, I'll turn the burner off. Now the way this, this coffee pot actually works, even, even though it looks like the coffee's boiling, it's actually not, it's not actually boiling. The water down in the lower chamber is boiling and it's creating water vapor steam pressure. It's pushing it up the, up the tube, which is, which is causing the upper chamber to, to appear to be boiling, but the, it's, actually not, it's actually not boiling. I know that's kind of a, a kind of an interesting concept. Um, there's a, a nice Wikipedia article on the operation of vacuum pots, otherwise known as siphon pots, which I will which I will link below. I really like using my vacuum pot, and since it's a an immersion style coffee maker, I think it actually makes very good tasting coffee. It's very smooth. It's got a good rich flavor to it. And since it's an aversions pot, it seems to use less coffee grounds. I like the fact that the resulting coffee is really quite hot. I tend to put my coffee in a thermos afterwards so I can enjoy it later in the day. So nice hot coffee really is a benefit for me. I like the fact that it doesn't require any paper filters. So as long as I have a heat source, water and coffee grounds, I can always brew coffee. Now it does require a little bit more fiddling around than a drip maker, and maybe cleanup isn't quite as easy, but it's probably com comparable to a French press. So at the end of three minutes, we simply turn off the burner. And now we wait. So for the final step, what actually happens here is, as the lower chamber cools, it will actually begin to create a vacuum in the lower chamber, and it will actually suck the coffee down back into the lower chamber. The way you can kind of test it, that actually that's the case, if you actually attempt to fill the funnel when it's off the coffee pot, the liquid will just sit there. I mean, gravity is, is not adequate to drain the upper chamber into the lower chamber. So you have, you have to have a good, a good seal on the gasket for this step to do its thing. And there she goes. She's starting to pull a vacuum. And that wasn't as satisfying sounding as sometimes. Sometimes it'll make a really good suck sound there at the end. So the final step, of course, is just to uh, remove the the upper upper part of the thing, set it aside, and dispense. See how nice and hot that is. And then what I do is I put the remainder of the pot into a thermos so I can enjoy the rest. Now doesn't that look doesn't that look delicious? There's nothing quite like a fresh hot cup of coffee that actually tastes good while camping. So if you like this video, please give me a like below and please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this and others. And if you do subscribe to my channel, you get to see me in the next video. So usually once I enjoy my first cup of coffee and things cool, then I, I empty the grounds. Now, it's not as bad as it looks. So I, I remove the gasket. We're composters, so I, I carry a, a one gallon ice cream bucket with me when I go camping. Actually, a couple of them if I need to. 
I just I re just uh, release the spring, reach in and pull out the, the little tab, give it a couple of taps, get most of the uh, grounds off the filter, and then typically I'll ha I'll have like orange peels or banana peels around. So you know, I'm just I don't need to do it this way. But if I have if I happen to have an orange peel or a banana peel laying around, I'll just uh, I'll just reach in there, it just saves me from having to clean my hands off. I'm just trying to conserve water because I'm dry camping for, I'll probably be dry camping for two solid weeks and uh, I'm trying to conserve on the water that I have. So I take a banana peel, you can, you can tear off a, one of the pieces, just kind of reach in and scrape most of it out of there. You know, you can also use paper towels and things, but uh, you know, I, Part of the reason I like I like using this pot is that I'm not I'm not having to waste uh, paper products, and I I often preheat my thermos, so I'll, I'll usually keep a I'll take take the the water that I poured out of the thermos and like heating up my cup, and I'll just use that to to rinse it out, and then finally just take a Take a you know soapy sc scrubber, you know give it a quick, give it a quick once over. Um, dump a little bit more water in there. You don't need much. And then same with the filter. Just 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 throw some, uh, and away she goes. We're all cleaned up and, and ready for the next use.